of the world. You see, uh, he told Jeremiah, I made you a prophet long before. This earth had shape without form before it was void. Yeah. He said, I possessed your ways before I made the deep blue sea. I am the cause, the reason for it all, and all I had to do was speak. Yes, I am the cause, the reason for it all, and all I had to do was speak. They don't know he's in complete control. L.O.M. is running his show, yeah. He's in complete control. L.O.M. is running his show. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Lansing branch was established in 1973. The dean is Dr. Terry Welsh, and the president is Dr. Tina Pettigrew. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted with the name Jesus. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name. But it is an erroneous name. 
a minor investigation on your part. In a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain. A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh, led the children of Israel out of Egypt. He called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is, 
and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, compared to religions, psychology, philosophy, and both modern and practical occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we will have a prayer by Dr. Susan Craig. Our scripture for today is Joshua, the sixth chapter, to be read by Dr. Alice Player. I will be doing the announcements at the end of class. We will have a couple selections from the choir. And our readers for today will be Dr. Graciela Underwood and Dr. Kimberly Mayangu. <laughs> Good morning, class. Let us all bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we thank you for bringing us out this morning to, have, to hear something that you have to say to us this morning. We ask that you humble our hearts and our minds so that we might receive these blessings that you have given this, at this time, in this age, knowing full well what is happening in the world and the things that are going on in our daily lives. And that you give us peace and joy and hope. And with all these blessings through your son, Yahshua, let us all say hallelujah. Good morning. I'll be reading Joshua, uh, the sixth chapter from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Trainer and the Scripture Research Association. Now, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And Yahweh said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of, of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. 
and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, let the seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of, the, before the ark of Yahweh. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and come past the city, and let him that is armed pass before the ark of Yahweh. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before Yahweh, and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of Yahweh followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets. And the re reward came after the ark, and the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. So the ark of Yahweh compassed the city, going about it once, and they came upon and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of Yahweh, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets, ram's horns before the ark of Yahweh went on continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the re reward came after the ark of Yahweh, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for Yahweh hath given you the city. And the city shall be de and the city shall be dedicated, even it and all that are therein to Yahweh. Only Rahab the hostess shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto Yahweh. They shall come into the treasury of Yahweh. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpets and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep, and ass with the edge of the sword. And Joshua had said unto the, unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the hostess's house, and bring out thence the woman, and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rehab, Rahab and her father and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had, and they brought out all her kindred, and left them without the city of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire. And all that was therein, only the silver and the gold, and the vessels of brass and of iron, and they put into the treasure and of iron, and they put into the treasury of the house of Yahweh. And Yahshua gave Rahab the hostess alive, and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even until this day, because she hid the messengers which Yahshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Yahshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before Yahweh that rises up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So Yahweh was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. That was Joshua, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. Good morning, class. 
Before we get started, I would like to welcome our visiting brethren from Detroit, Drs. Christina Kent and Dr. Jerry Kent for joining with us, and also from Chicago, Dr. Dustin Craig for joining with us. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you all here. Thank you for coming. Yep, nope, I know. <laughs> Choir.
Thank you, choir. Our first speaker for this morning will be Dr. Brandon Craig. All right, good morning. Glad to see everybody. Um, very happy to be here. Uh, anytime I can um, give back a reasonable testimony of some of the things I've learned since coming into this class is a wonderful opportunity. Um, and I can only give back what's been given to me. I can't give anything else but what's been revealed to me by the Holy Spirit, Yahshua the Messiah. Um, I see some new faces I've never seen before, which is great. Welcome. You're in the right place. Um, this looks like a lot, you know, even to me still after coming to these classes for a long time. It looks like a lot. Um, and, it, and it is, but it's also very simple too. And the Creator Yahweh has made a way for you to know something about Him in the most simplest forms possible that you can know something for sure about your Creator because He wants you to know something about Him. Um, and to know, to have a knowledge and understanding of your Creator through His Son, who is Yahweh in a, in a physical body at that time, and is the Holy Spirit, and is our King and Savior, to know something about Him and to know His name through that name is eternal life. Because the physical body we live in right now is a, is a physical existence, and it's not going to go on forever. Whether, you're, whether you think that there's a God or anything like that, or whether you're an atheist or whatever you're in, everybody knows that this physical body is not going to last forever. And as you get older, you start to understand that in certain ways, which is, uh, I feel achy, or I, you know, I, I have a headache, or things start to break down over time, right? And um, I was talking with... Uh, Graciela Underwood this morning, and she was sort of teasing me that I was turning 40 this year, and, because her son's also turning 40. He's just a couple weeks uh, younger than me. And, and uh, you know, I had been thinking about it recently, and, and I, you know, yeah, but it's a milestone, and people kind of make fun of you for it a little bit because you're getting old or whatever, but uh, it's a great feeling because it's just a number, right? But you start to, as you get older, you start to realize that this isn't going to last forever, but there is an eternity. See, because Yahweh exists in eternity, right? And what we exist in this physical creation in time, which is depicted on this chart in the Ages and Dispensations chart, is that uh, time exists within eternity, right? Which is Yahweh. We exist within Yahweh, and nothing can escape Yahweh. Try as you, as you might, but you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, if you... If you get on that rocket ship with Elon Musk and try to go to Mars in the next so-called 10 to 20 years, you're still not going to get outside of Yahweh. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Now, it also says in the Bible that uh, he's, he's uh, uh, made the bounds of our habitation, right? And you know what that, what that entails. I mean, you, if you go on a rocket ship successfully to Mars, <laughs> you still have to take oxygen with you. You still have to take water and food and, and things with you. Those things don't exist on that dead body out there in space. Uh, but anyway, so it seems like a lot when you sit before these charts, but it's really, it can be very simple to learn something about your creator. Now, the charts were painted as a, as a direct result of a divine vision and revelation that was given to a man in the year 1931 named Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in Ohio. Um, a sixth grade educated black man uh, who did not have um, an education beyond that because at his, in his day and age he had to go to work to support his family and, and himself. Uh, Dr. Kinley, just short history, Dr. Kinley was a minister in the Church of God for some 15 years um, and was eventually expelled from that church for uh, accusations against him um, and spent some time uh, reflecting within himself and really searching and asking for God to reveal something to him. He was a very, uh, he was desiring to know something about God uh, because of the, you know, having served as a minister in this church for so many years 
and then having a, an accusation against him, which if you, could, if you read about it, you can do your homework and um, find out what that was all about, because there's a history of Dr. Kinley that's available, and we have it on our Google Drive within this class if you read that. Um, but, and then also Dr. Kinley had, had a, a, a bunch of children with his wife, and one of them had passed away uh, during that time. And so Dr. Kinley was, um, he, he was, he wanted to know why God would, you know, having served in the church and having, you know, preached uh, what he thought at that time was the gospel uh, to, to his, his followers, the believers in that church, why would God take his son away from him? And why would God allow him as an assistant pastor, or whatever high-ranking pre, uh, uh, preacher he was, allow him to, be, to have this ac accusation against him? So Dr. Kinley um, you know, would reflect on, on some of these things according to this, this, his biography. Um, and uh, Dr. it's said that Dr. Kinley was sitting on his porch or something like that, and, and was really searching and asked for, well, if there's a God or something like this, call, cause that star to fall. And the star fell. And he was like, okay, well, that's a coincidence, right? How, how often is that going to happen? I said, well, let's do it again. Cause the star to fall. And it fell again. So, and Dr. Kinley was becoming aware of the fact that God not only existed, but he was very soon to reveal himself in his actuality to him through a divine vision and revelation which if you read in the Bible, that is how the, the prophets, Moses and the prophets were inspired to write their writings in the Bible, divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. Uh, now get me, um, if you wanna get, this is a great way to, to introduce the vision, get uh, Proverbs 29 and 18, and then also get um, Habakkuk uh, 2 and 1. But let's start with uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. So it says in Proverbs, where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. Read on. But happy is he that keepeth the law. Okay. So where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. Now, this is how Yahweh reveals himself to his people through divine visions. He did it with Moses back here uh, in the wilderness of Sinai when Moses was called up to Mount Sinai and also to John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos, which is depicted on this chart by these two areas right here in white, and also to Dr. Kinley. Now, um, you come to find out that it's, there's not two visions, there's not three visions, there's just one. And Dr. Kinley also describes in a certain uh, text that when he was taken up into eternity and revealed this divine vision and revelation, that he was aware of the presence of Moses and John at the same time. And that's deep right there. Because he was in eternity with Yahweh, right? So the, mo so the vision was shown at the same time in eternity. Well, we say time loosely, but at the same point in eternity. So wrap your little peanut around that, right? That's a lot. Okay, so get Habakkuk uh, 2 and 1 for me, please. Habakkuk 2 and 1. Mm -hmm. I will stand upon my watch okay. and set me upon the tower mm -hmm. and will watch to see what he will say unto me mm -hmm. and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Okay. And Yahweh answered me and said, mm -hmm. Write the vision mm -hmm. and make it plain upon tables mm -hmm. that everyone may read it fluently. Mm -hmm. So it says right there, write the vision, make it plain upon tables or tablets so that everyone may read it fluently. Now, after uh, Dr. Kinley was revealed this vision and revelation, uh, Yahweh asked him, uh, man, what will you do with what I showed you? But when he got the vision, he had the vision first, and then Yahweh asked him, man, what will you do with what I showed you? And Dr. Kinley said, I, I, I don't know, because he wasn't given the revelation, which is the understanding of what he saw. After he, was, uh, after he was taken back out of physical consciousness and into eternity and given the revelation, then Yahweh asked him again, man, what will you do with what I've shown you? And he said, teach your people your will, Yahshua. And so 
using that scripture, you understand that we have to make the, the vision plain upon tables, and that's what, he's, what he did with these, setting up these schools, is painting these charts and making the vision plain upon tables, which is what you see right in front of you. So uh, what's been on my heart and mind uh, a lot is, is really being conscious of the simplicity of this gospel and um, understanding that you can take this as deep as you really want it to go. You can, you can desire for all the knowledge and understanding that Yahweh is prepared to give you, but remember that Yahweh is intelligence and knowledge and wisdom. He, he doesn't just possess these, these attributes. He is these attributes. And if you have a little bit of knowledge and wisdom about something about him, it's because he gave it to you. You can't study up on this stuff. It says in there, uh, uh, the scripture is, uh, uh, what's it say? Um, this is my 40-year-old brain going here. Uh, <laughs> and all these, my parents probably like, yeah, get to my age, right? Uh, the scripture is of no divine, of no uh, private interpretation, right? But it's the holy men of Yahweh were moved by the Holy Spirit, right? Because you can't just study up on this and, and suddenly get something about this. Because there's other sects and religions and everybody out there who are studying up and they think they've got it. You, when the Jehovah's Witnesses come by your house and try to tell you that Jehovah is God's name, that's because that's their interpretation, because someone decided to do that. But that's not God's name, because if you do any minor investigation, you know that there is no letter J in this English language until just a couple hundred years ago. And there's no J or J sound in the language that was spoken by Yahshua the Messiah at this time, still, to this day. So how could the creator of the stellar universe be called by a name when you can't even make that sound? When he was revealing himself down here to Moses and, and the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai, he didn't say his name was Jesus or Jehovah because that sound did not even exist in the language they were speaking. This letter J came into existence in the English language around, what, 16, um, what is it, with the King James Bible, right? And even King James wasn't even called King James, right? If you look at old British coins, he's Jacobus, right? I, I Jacobus. So uh, anyway, so there's no J until we get to this, to our, our wonderful language, English, that was with, which has just been within the last couple hundred years. And the, the, so then there's the tetragrammaton, which is the YHWH, which you see uh, right here. And then in Hebrew, they read from right to left, and we read from left to right. And... Yahweh has the, the vowel. So in Hebrew, there's no vowels, right? But in English, we have to have vowels to pronounce our words. So we have Yahweh here. Now, they've taken those vowels, and they took the vowels from the uh, Hebrew title Adonai and inserted those into the Tetragrammaton and came up with this Jehovah, or I guess they would have said Yehovah, possibly initially, but became Jehovah once we've introduced the J. So it's, it's all kind of a mess. Right, And we need to be straightened out because this is not going to get you anywhere. This is not going to get you anywhere except for the wrong place. And that's not where you want to go. That's not a happy place. So Yahweh revealed himself to Dr. Kinley as Yahweh, Elohim, the divine title that Yahweh gave to himself when he made the creation in the super incorporeal form and Yahshua, which is the name of the Savior, who walked the earth plane for some 33 years, died, buried, resurrected, ascended to heaven, poured out the Holy Spirit. For you to know something about him, he lives in you. Because when back here before he came in, there was this stuff called the Old Testament. This was, this was given down here to the Jews, down here in the wilderness of Sinai. When Moses was given this vision, he got the Ten Commandments. Moses got the Ten Commandments. Moses was a Jew back here, right? You guys, us, I don't, is anybody a Jew in here? Well, <laughs> inwardly, not one outwardly, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, anyway, you didn't grow up that way, right? You didn't do a bar mitzvah and all that? Okay. So, uh, unless you were a Jew down here under this law, you don't, that, that Ten Commandments has been taken out of the way. And in fact, if you're still carrying around the Ten Commandments, you're denying that this man came 
in this form, this physical form, and died on this cross and poured out the Holy Spirit. You're denying that. That's blasphemy in the, in the worst kind of way right there. So little do you also know, you know, you got this top 10 right here. David Letterman had the top 10 list. There's 603 other ones. Did you know that? Probably not. So there's 613 of these things, and you can't keep any of them. Even the Jews couldn't keep them. That's why they needed a Savior in the first place. So, uh, where was that? I have a scripture out? No. I had Habakkuk. Okay, so write the vision, which is what Dr. Kinley did when he established these schools. Now, you have the name, Yahweh. Very important. There's three very fundamental things that you need to know about coming to this class and knowing something about Yahshua the Messiah. There's the name, which you got to have right. There's no other name. Tim said it in the moderation. There's no other name given among, given, what is it? Under heaven, given among men, whereby you must be saved. Must, not can, must, right? Yahshua, that's it, nothing else. It is the way it is. No J, no Jesus. Sorry, right? Yahshua, that's it. See, it says in there, I come in my Father's name and ye receive me not. See, his father's name is Yahweh. That means and my last name is Craig. That means my dad's name's got to be Craig too, right? Because I came in my father's name too. That's set up that way. It's something natural to understand something physical or something spiritual. spiritual. See, Yahshua came in his name. You see that Yah right there? Yahweh. You see that Yahweh right there? He came in his father's name too. Yahshua. I don't see, I see J-E, yeah, okay. Anyway, scrambled eggs. It's a mess, right? It's not even the, it's J and G. I mean, right. I mean, listen, it doesn't take much to sort of deconstruct these things in your brain when you go and you kind of look at some things. And everybody's carrying around something like this these days. You have more knowledge available to you at your fingertips than ever before in the history of this, of this creation. More than ever. You know, you, you come to class... Uh, and you hear some of the some of the folks have been around for some time, and when they first came into these classes in the 70s, 60s, whatever, they had to go down to a big old library into this reference section and dig out these dusty old books that they probably couldn't even pick up. My my poor mom was probably 130 pounds and couldn't even pick up one of these things, right? But you've got all that and more, even smaller, right here, and everybody's plugged into it, right? So so read something, right? I, I mean, really, everybody's plugged into it. Look up something, you know? Somebody says something to you, oh, well, hang on a second. I gotta check those facts, right? And make sure that something's right, right? Yeah, we set it up that way, especially right down here at the very close of this age. So you have no excuse. You're carrying it around in your pocket, right? Listen to something. If somebody, if somebody brings something out, check it out. Go home and check it out, you know? That's what it's there for. So you have the name, right? Now the second thing that's most important is the pattern, right? Now, when Moses had this vision up here in Mount Sinai, he was, uh, Yahweh broke himself down into this uh, super incorporeal form, which is Elohim, right? And he showed him uh, the days of the creation, right here, in six days, according to Moses' vision. It didn't take Yahweh six days to, to make this thing, which they'd like to lead you to believe. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created in the beginning of what? Did anybody bother to ask in the beginning of what in, in Genesis 1 and 1? Well, if you do some research and you stick around long enough, you find out that it's the beginning of Moses' vision because Moses wrote Genesis. Right. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, right? Genesis, we call them now Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right? But in some Bibles, it, it might be called the first book of Moses, or Exodus would be called the second book of Moses. Because Moses didn't call, entitle those books that those titles. The Bible scholars later on and whenever, you know, because Exodus is a Latin word, right? Leviticus is a Latin word for Levites, which was the tribe of priests that operated the tabernacle pattern out here, right? So Moses didn't speak Latin. <laughs> how could he, how could he tell, oh, I'm going to call this one Exodus. No, it just means exit. That's because it's a story, chronic... It's the, it's, the, it's the chronicle of, of the exodus, the exit of the, of the children of Israel who are in bondage in Egypt, out of, the, out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai. And it chronicles Moses' vision that was given to him by Yahweh Elohim. And then uh, the days of the creation in six days, 
the seventh day when Yahweh Elohim rested, and then he had another vision where he was given the, inst the divine instructions for this, this tabernacle, which was, uh, so let's get that, uh, uh, Exodus 25 and 8. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digesting some things because I'm trying to get to a point, but, you know, everything that I'm talking about is just, is, it's not anything new, right? There's nothing new under the sun. That's Yahshua the Messiah. There's nothing new, but take some of these things, if it, if it, if it just kind of tickles your brain a little bit, take it home and dig it apart. Because, you know, I was doing some research the other day because I was thinking about you know, I work in, in medicine and, and all the correlations between the tabernacle and the physical body are just like, you know, I'm like, wow, you mean to tell me that even that's threefold? And then breaking it down even further, that's threefold too? And, you know, you, sometimes he just gives you a little tidbit and you just sort of run with it. It's like, whoa. Wow. Okay, go ahead. Give me an Exodus 25 and 8. Exodus 25 and 8. Mm -hmm. and, let the, and let them make me a sanctuary. So this is Yahweh Elohim telling Moses back here. Let them make me a sanctuary. For what reason? Read. That I may dwell among them. That I may, that Yahweh Elohim can dwell among them. Right. Read. According to all that I show thee, mm -hmm. after the pattern of the oh, tabernacle. Hold on. What was that word? That P word right there? After the pattern. Pattern. You mean that word's in the Bible? Yeah, it's right there. Go ahead. After the pattern of the tabernacle. After the pattern of the tabernacle. So he wants, make me a sanctuary so that I can dwell among you after the pattern. Don't make it like you want it, Moses. You know, don't make it like those other guys out there want to make it. Make it after I show you after a pattern. Read. And the pattern of all the instruments. And then there's further a pattern of all the instruments which were to be placed inside the tabernacle. Read. Thereof. Uh huh. Even so shall ye make it. So make it like this, Moses. Make it no other way, right? This is the way you're going to make it. I'm going to give you a pattern. So you buy something, right? Uh, I don't care what it is. You, it got a set of instructions with it, doesn't it? Well, what is that? It's a pattern, right? So you got, and you can't, well, you know, you get like a, let's say you get like a, um, I don't know, a plastic model car. I used to build these when I was a kid. You got all these pieces in there, right? And then there's an instruction manual in there. Do you just take out all the pieces and just put it together any way you want? Would you end up with a plastic model car at the end if you just did it any way you wanted? You got to follow the instructions. And that's what Yahweh Elham's telling Moses out here. You got to follow the instructions to build this exactly like I say, right? And why is he doing that? Because everything in the universe is made by this pattern. So he's got to, so get uh, Romans 1 and 19. Because mm -hmm. everything in the, because Yahweh, Elohim, is the pattern, number one. Romans 1 19. Because Start that, out that way, read on. Because that which may be known of Yahweh mm -hmm. is manifest in them. So, so, whoa, <laughs> slow down. We'll digest this a little bit. So, uh, so because that which may be known of Yahweh is means, manifest, which means something may be known of Yahweh, right? It's not just some secret that, mm -hmm. you know, we just, well, maybe that's something to figure out once you're gone, once you're dead. Oh, by then it's too late. You got to know something about Yahweh right now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is manifest in them. So Yahweh made a way for something to be known about him in you, manifested in you. Read on. For Yahweh hath showed it unto them. Uh -huh. Because he showed it unto them. And how did he do that? Well, he showed Moses this tabernacle pattern back here in the vision. Read. For the invisible things of him mm -hmm. from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Oh, slow down. Now it's getting a little crazy. The invisible things of, of him, of God, Yahweh, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. You can see things, you can see invisible things. How? Being understood by the things that are made. Being understood by the things that are made. And what was made? What was divinely inspired by Yahweh to be made? There's only three things, three structures. That's it. Yahweh didn't tell him to build this, for example. That was big. That was something real big out there. <laughs> that was crazy. He said, no, he said, he told 
Well, first, he, in time, he told Moses, uh, Noah down here to build an ark. And this was back in that first age, the antediluvian age. Build an ark. And the ark is threefold too. Upper deck, middle deck, lower deck. And don't build it any way you want, Noah. Build it the way I say to build it. And Noah was faithful, preached 120 years, it's going to rain. Noah built this thing. Everybody ridiculed him, made fun of him. What are you doing out there? Building an ark, right? Built this ark. Built this tabernacle. Eventually, based on these plans, building this temple up here, Solomon's temple up here in, in Jerusalem, Mount Moriah, right? Read on. Is there anything more there? Even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. Whoa, we'll start over. We've got to get the context of this eternal power and supernal nature. Read on. Because that which may mm -hmm. be known of Yahweh... Something's going to be known about Yahweh. ...is How? manifest in them. Manifest in you. Read. For Yahweh has showed it because unto them. Because he showed it to them. And he showed it. It's there. The proof's in the pudding. Read. For the invisible things mm -hmm. of him... Mm -hmm from the creation of the world mm -hmm. are clearly seen visible things of him are clearly seen why being understood by the things that are made being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and supernal nature so that they are without excuse and plus on top of all this you can understand something about his eternal power and supernal nature so that you don't have an excuse so What's the supernal, what's the eternal power? Well, that's Yahweh, pure spirit. What's, because uh, he is power. See that? See that word power up there? He doesn't just have some power. He is all power. Yeah. That's it. These are attributes, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, strength. These are nine principal divine attributes. Yahweh's got a lot more attributes than just nine. But these are principal attributes. And he's, it doesn't just possess these things. He is these things. Power. Now, what's, and then what's this thing about uh, the supernal nature? Well, that's what the world likes to call the Godhead, right? So you have the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. What's the Father's name? Uh, Lord. Well, this is what they say out there. Right? Lord. What's the, what's the Son's name? Jesus. What's the Holy Spirit's name? I don't know. What is it? Well, no, it's not the way it is. See, Yahweh's the Father, and that His name's not Lord. Lord's a title. Get just get over it, right? It's a there's there's a house of lords in England. They they're all aristocracy, and and they you know decide how to, to make laws, and they're all ho 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 and sitting up in their little chamber, which is leaking, by the way. I don't know if you knew anything about the houses of Parliament, but they're going straight down the toilet. Anyway, so you have uh, Lord as a title. You know, it's just, it's an English title. There's no name called Lord, right? Uh, God is a title. It's, it's German from Gott, which, you know, English is actually a Germanic name. So we got a lot of that tradition from the Germans. God is German. It's a title, God. And then that mess right there. But then you have, so you have Yahweh. Elohim is a divine title. Yahweh chose this title for himself. It means almighty. So you have Yahweh, which means he who exists or causes to exist, is almighty. I mean, that's what that's the end of the story right there. You got nothing else, right? You can't, I mean, you know. And then Yahweh Elohim further breaks himself down from the super incorporeal form into physical form to walk among us as Yahshua. Now, this isn't just Jesus Christ, Son of God, right? Son of God. God's little boy, God's representative on earth, right? Have you heard that one before, right? So if you know anything about supernal nature, read uh, 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 Colossians 2 and 9. Get that, pick that one up. So the supernal nature, you have Yahweh, the Father, Elohim, the Word or Son, Yahshua, the Holy Spirit. Well, actually, first get First John five and seven. That's because you gotta understand that first. First John five and seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Okay, so there's this is what we're talking about: the Godhead right here, the supernal nature. There are three that bear record in heaven: Read. the Father, the Father, the Word, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And these three are a Trinity. These three are one. Did you see the word Trinity in there? 
No? Really? That's what they've been telling me that my whole life, right? That's what they're trying to tell me out there right now. Trinity. It's not Trinity? What's it say? And there are three that bear witness in earth. It says these three are one, right? Mm -hmm. One means three. No. One, one means what? One means one, right? Read on. And there are three that bear witness in earth. There are three that bear witness. Two, the three that bear record in heaven as one. There are three that bear witness in earth. Read. The spirit uh -huh. and the water. The spirit. And the blood. And the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Now, check it out about spirit, water, and blood. So spirit, that's Yahweh, right? He's pure spirit. Incomprehensible, inscrutable, no shape and form, right? Then you have water, right? What's water? Water is an intermediate state of, uh, well, water in its liquid form is an intermediate state. Because water exists in three states, right? But it's just water, <laughs> right? But still just one, you know, uh, uh, molecule, right? One chemical composition. Water uh, in its liquid state uh, doesn't have any shape or form, but exists in a shape and form of whatever vessel you put it into. That's just like Elohim right here. Exists in the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. That's what the superincorporeal form is, right? So you have pure spirit, right? Spirit, and then this is kind of like water, right? Because it's sort of like a, a liquid form contained in a vessel, right? And then you have blood. Because Yahshua, the Messiah, when he was in a physical body, had flesh and blood, right? So the three that bear record in heaven are one. Bear witness to the three in earth, spirit, water, and blood, which are also, read on. And these three are, and there are three that bear witness in the earth, uh -huh. the spirit, the water, and the blood, uh -huh. and these three agree in one. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, mm -hmm. Yeah. The witness of Yahweh is greater, mm -hmm. for this is the witness of Yahweh, mm -hmm. which he hath testified of his Son. So we're talking about bearing record and bearing witness, which is the same thing, right? So if we receive the witness of men, you got these wit <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses. Here's the witness of men going around knocking on doors, right? Taking that Bible scripture literally. You know, I stand at the door, behold, I stare at the door and knock, right? Well, that's not that door, it's this door. <laughs> uh, you bear witness of men, you're going to get this right here. But if you what? Read on. If we receive the witness of men, mm -hmm. the witness of Yahweh is greater. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Here's the witness of men right here. Here's the witness of men right here, right? The witness of men is, uh, uh, here's further evidence of that, uh, the Council of Nicene, right? When Constant, uh, Emperor Constantine all of a sudden decided that uh, Christianity is the faith of the empire, right? Forever the Romans uh, are, are polytheistic, worshiping everything under the sun. They got a name for every single thing that happens, you know, planetaries, planets have names and stars and moons and whatever, has a name, right? But all of a sudden he goes, well, I don't know. Hmm. We need some people in this empire, and there's a heck of a lot of pagans out there. I got an idea. Let's take one religion and take all their customs with them. We'll call it something. That's the witness of men right there. Did that come from divinely inspired from Yahweh? Did Yahweh come down and tell Emperor Constantine, hey, listen, we got to get these people together because this is just not working out. We got because we got too many people over here, all these tribes, you know, doing their thing. They got a name for everything. But you know what? It's really all the same thing. So why don't we just call it Christianity and wrap it all up in a little thing, tie a bow around it. No, it doesn't work like that. That's the witness of men. If you receive the witness of men, you're going to get that. You get in trouble. Read on. You get the witness of Yahweh is greater, way greater, right? Because how does Yahweh reveal himself in divine visions and revelations, right? Read on. The witness of Yahweh is greater, for this is the witness of Yahweh, which he had testified of his son. He, this is the witness of Yahweh, which he had testified of his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Read. He that believeth on the son of Yahweh hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not Yahweh hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that Yahweh gave of his son. See, same thing like here, we were talking about before. If you didn't believe what he came to do right here, you didn't believe in this, you're still carrying this stuff over after this, that's no, no. <laughs> so you don't need to do that. You don't need to follow Ten Commandment law, have all these ceremonies, 
ba baptism, this is probably the worst thing you probably do, you know, you don't, you know, so any, anyway, well, you can talk about baptism all day long. That's what everybody's doing out there. Baptizing in water, right? Where does it say in, uh, in the Bible that you are to baptize in water for salvation? It never says that in there. When John the Baptist was coming in here and doing his ministry out here, when Yahshua started his ministry and asked to be baptized of him, he was baptizing in water Jews and Jews only for the, for the uh, Repentance. remission of sin, right? It wasn't to salvation. It was to forgive them of their, <laughs> right? Repentance, baptism of repentance, not the baptism of salvation, right? And... Baptism it, it means immersion. It's not, it has nothing to do with water, but it did at this time to this, but that's been fulfilled. See, okay, uh, I'm getting off on a tangent here, but uh, the true baptism is, the, is coming in here and being immersed in the Holy Spirit, right? Anyway, um, so we were off on the pattern, right? And then the last thing is the fulfillment, which is, Yahshua, or the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to come in and fulfill the law and the prophets, taking away all these carnal ordinances, um, uh, putting to rest all these dead works. You don't have to do these dead works. The only thing that there's left to do, and I'll just, and then I'll be done. The only thing that there's left to do is to believe him, that he came that he took care of all this for, for you, but you got to realize that he's in you. That's the work. There is none of these works anymore. We're not, we're not doing this anymore. The work is to believe in Yahshua the Messiah. Because this, there's proof if you, if you stick around and dig deep enough. He's got this so tight everything just falls right into place. Anytime that you feel like there's something that's not right, he'll clear it right up for you. Clear it right up. Because, see, it says in there, uh, Behold, I'm Yahweh, I change not. Right? Yahweh, like, it's right here. Yahweh didn't change his name. If he doesn't change, he's not going to change his name. Right? Ever. He doesn't change. So he, he, he works by a pattern right here. One, two, three. And just remember that. One, two, three. If that's all you know, know it for sure. Because that could be enough. Remember, one, two, three. Pattern. Remember, Yahshua. Always keep that conscious in your, in your mind. Yeah, did we get that? We didn't get that. <laughs> Thank you. Did we get that far? Colossians. There's so much, right? You get up here and you're just like, well, I, I know exactly where I'm going. Colossians 2 and 9. <laughs> and Yasha's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're just doing what I say. <laughs> For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh in bodily form. For in who? It's, it's in Yahshua the Messiah. Back up a little bit and you know read the context, which is really important because anybody can cherry pick scriptures out of the Bible and make that fit to how I feel today, tear off their little calendar and go, oh, well, you know, Psalm this and that, and that's how I feel today. That's not how that works, because it's not about you. It's about Him. Right. See, so, for in Him, Yahshua, I should point to this one, this looks like death. This is resurrection. That's what you want. You don't want that. He did that for you, so you didn't have to do that. Uh, for, in him, for in Him dwelleth all the fullness Right? Is that what it says? Okay. A little bit of the fullness. You want me to read it again? God's chief representative on earth, right? No. All of it. Everything that is within pure spirit. All of these attributes that he is power, strength, foundation, wisdom, intelligence, all these things. He, he's all those too. Because Yahweh put himself in a physical body. Right? Read on. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh mm -hmm. in bodily form. Mm -hmm. And ye are complete in him, mm. which 
which is the head is of, the head of all principality mm -hmm. and power. Mm -hmm. Who's the head of all principality and power? Yashua. Yashua. Yeah, that's right. Read. Read. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Hold on, hold on. A circumcision. So what's a circumcision? Back here uh, under the law, they were told to circumcise their male babies. That's when the, the flesh of the foreskin of the penis is cut off, right? And that's an old Jewish tradition. That's one of these carnal ordinances down here. It says circumcision right there. See the baby and the priest? That's it. <laughs> carnal ordinances, right? Circumcision. But we're not talking about a circumcision of the flesh. Right. What kind of circumcision are we talking about? Now, a circumcision is a cutting away. Right. It's kind of like a death, right? Read on. In putting off the body of the sins. Hold on, back up. One more. Okay, in whom also ye are circumcised. In, who, in Yahshua the Messiah ye are circumcised. Circumcised of what? With circumcised the, of, of, of flesh? Uh, no, you're circumcised of, of thoughts, opinions, yeah. theories, imaginations, everything that you came up with or that this world indoctrinated you with, right? Because we, we're born into this world... What do you do? You, you grow up, you, uh, you go to school, you learn about the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and all these things of the world, right? Right? So you come to class, Yahshua shows him something about you, you got to get rid of all that stuff. That's got to go. That has no place with him in eternity. None whatsoever. You got to let that stuff go. That's what this circumcision is. That's not of the flesh. Read on. Ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, mm -hmm. in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. It's putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Read. By the circumcision of the Messiah, mm -hmm. buried with him by immersion. Hold on. Buried with him in baptism or immersion. And it's not talking about a burial or a, a, an immersion in water. It's talking about being immersed in the Holy Spirit, yeah. right? That's the so there. So you had a death, right? That we always talk about death, burial, resurrection, mm -hmm. right? So he had a death, burial, and a resurrection, right? There's a death right there. That's the cutting away of those old carnal concepts, theories, thoughts, opinions, imaginations. That's a death, because after that, you're not the same anymore. Then there's a burial, buried with him in his baptism, which is of the Holy Spirit. Read on. Wherein also ye are risen with him. Hold on, hold on. So you're not just going to stay in that state because you're always looking for a, res a resurrection. You go to bed at night, that's a death. You're under the covers at night, that's a burial. But are you going to, you hope to wake up the next morning, right? <laughs> that's a resurrection. That's what you're looking for. You're always looking for the resurrection. You go through life, uh, I got fired from my job. Man, that's death. Burial? Oh, man, I feel terrible. What, why did I do that? that was, why, why did I say that to my boss? He, you know, I should have just kept my mouth shut. That's a burial, right? Resurrection? Next week, Yahshua got you a job, right? You're looking for a resurrection. I mean, that's just something trivial to understand something spiritual about Yahshua and Messiah because you take something natural to understand something spiritual. That's the belt. Okay, uh, what do I got? A couple minutes? Uh, ye are risen with... Then I'll be oh. done. Go ahead. Ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of Yahweh. So you're risen with Yahshua through the faith of his operation, right? Of Yahweh. Uh-huh. Who hath raised him from the dead. Who hath, right, because <laughs> he didn't stay like this, but you see people wearing these crucifixes, right, which is the death. Why do you want to... Why do you want to harp on the death, right? Why do you want to look at that? I don't want to, I don't want to, my Savior's not hanging on a cross for eternity, right? Read on. And you, being dead in your sins. Mm, you, we're it, a mess, dead in sins, right? You, Dr. Kinley said, you came in that door dead on arrival, right? Read on. And the un circumcision of your flesh mm -hmm. and he quickened together he's not with talking him. about just the skin the flesh he's talking about the uncircumcision of those carnal thoughts opinions theories imaginations read he hath quickened together with him he quickened together with him see death was triumphed by him right here yours too everything that it's, he, he gave up everything for this for you read Having forgiven you all trespasses, mm -hmm. 
blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us. That's this right here. The handwriting of, that's why there's a hand right here. Carnal ordinances. Blotting that out. That This was against us, right? Read on. Which was contrary to us. This was contrary. This what was set up by Yahweh this way. Read. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his took cross. It that's why there's these nails right here. Nailed it to his cross. Done. Read on. Nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers. Spoiled principalities. Po right. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And that's what's going on right now. Watch the news. He's triumphing over all this stuff, right? You got an absolute mess out there right now. Everybody's, you know, it's, it's just, eh. but if you just, you know, let it go. Yahshua's in control. Nothing you're going to do about it. You're not going to change the will of Yahweh, right? He's making a show of it openly. Because what is he doing? He is shortly to reveal himself at the instantaneous revelation of Yahshua the Messiah to everybody. And every knee is going to bow. And I'm not talking about this knee right here. There's a knee up here. And it's the frontal portion of your corpus callosum. You got two of them. You got two of them. They're also called horns. We're reading in Joshua 6 about the horns. You got horns up here. In your, in your cheeks, they call them buccinator, right? And when you go to the dentist, I was at the dentist a couple weeks ago, and she was tell, talking to the assistant, buccal side, and I'm like, buccal? Yeah. Oh, yeah, trumpet. You got buccal, right? Trumpets in here, horns. But anyway, this frontal portion right here is called genu of the corpus callosum. And genu means knee. In the Catholic Church, they're genuflexing, right? But they're doing the wrong genuflex. This is the right genuflex right here, and every knee is going to bow. Okay, so uh, anyway, I heard the bell, and um, what I just encourage everybody to do is this. Have faith in Yahshua Messiah, because he proved himself to everybody. He gave you an adequate amount of, of intelligence to know something about him. You know, and don't think you're something special or great. I, you know, whatever I got, I got from him. I can't control his will. Whatever he's he's gonna do, his good pleasure, right? Uh, whatever you, whatever he's given you to know, hold on to it tight, because that's gonna. If that gets you through to the next stage, wonderful, because there's gonna be learning in ages to come. You don't have to know it all right now. Get as much as you can, but you don't have to know it all. Get just understand the simplicity. And with that, I'll say all praises to Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to Thank you, Dr. Craig. Our next speaker for today will be Dr. Don Player. I'd like to say good afternoon to the class. <clears throat> and I thoroughly enjoyed the remarks of the previous speaker. Um, would you go over and pick up um, Romans 1 and 16, um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1? And would you also find the uh, the scripture where it talks about the uh, faith of a mustard, mustard seed? Now we've been, like the previous speaker was talking about, uh, before coming into this class, um, basically, you know, the predominant religion in, in, in the United States is Chris, Christian. And that's, I grew up in that environment. So that's all I knew was, was Jesus Christ. But he talks about the times of this ignorance he winked at, but now requires that we all repent and realize that we don't, you know, and adhere to the things, the evidence that's been given. You don't want to believe a lie. So that's the encouragement. Go ahead. Romans 1. Romans 1 and 16. For I am not ashamed. Would you, no. Would you get the... Um, the, the, the 
the scripture about the uh, faith of a mustard seed first. I kind of want to follow a train if I can. Do the best that I can with it. And also the scripture that talks about uh, what faith is. Anyone, if you if you know where they are, you know this is a school. Yeah, if you would. Now while while they're looking at at that, when we go back, we always encourage everyone to go back to Moses because there is so much substance in the things that are, that's the foundation. If you're going to build a house, you want to make sure that your foundation is firm. And we have a, a building inspector here, and I, I think he would, he would attest to that, is that if you don't have a strong foundation, your house is not going to stand, or your faith is not going to stand when, when, those ad, when, the, when, when adverse times come. So you want to make sure that what you know, you understand for sure and that you're not blown about by every wind of doctrine or, you know, you know, there was, it talked about back with the, how that there were some that all they did was look for something new. They wanted to hear something new. And in a lot of instances, we are seeing the same thing. We're, we're, we're provided with, you know, the previous speaker was talking about an iPhone or, or being able to, we have so much information that's available to us. Does that, has that made the situation that we're in better? In a lot of ways, it's made it worse. Go ahead. Matthew 17 and 20. And Yahshua said unto them, Because of your lack of faith, for verily... verily uh, can you back up? To 19? Um, is, that, is that where it's going to come in? We're about the seed of a mustard seed? Yep, it's in okay, 20. Okay, go ahead. Yep. I'm sorry. Um, and Yahshua said unto them, because of your lack of faith. Because of your lack of faith. Now, the, even with Yahshua, his disciples that walk with him, you know, he, he told them, they, they saw all the miracles that he performed. And who was the one that he said, he told them before the crow? Peter. Peter. He told Peter that Peter was going to deny him three times. And he says, Master, I will never deny you. All, all men might deny you, but I won't. Go ahead. And, and this is what Yahshua says, before the crow crows three times, you will deny me. Well, before the cock crows. Okay, thank you. You understand what I mean. <laughs> you, you got it. Go ahead. <laughs> For ver verily I say unto you, if ye have, have faith as a grain of mustard seed. So if you had the, the faith of the seed, seed of a mustard seed, uh, Read it. Read it again, please. If ye have faith, if you have faith as a grain, as a grain of mustard seed, of a mustard seed, and my wife is a is a gardener, and you know you're talking about something extremely, extremely small. Um, you could you could spend you could you could fit thousands of them in the palm of your hand. Go ahead. Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall move. And okay. nothing shall be impossible unto you. So nothing can, shall be impossible unto you. Go ahead. Is there more there? Um, no, 21. You want 21? Go ahead. How be it this kind goeth not out by prayer and fasting? And okay. well, okay, I think that was it. Go ahead. That's sufficient. What else did I have? So first of all, we must have faith in him. Now he's given us reason enough to have faith. I mean, he's worked, I mean... And here's, here's the neat thing about that. And I can only testify to what he's done in my life where, you know, my wife can tell you, I, I can get to the point where I'm, I, I can get disturbed about things and, 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 and she calls it fretting, and I do. But the things that he has taken me through has caused me to have the utmost confidence in him. The fact that he has taken me through things that I didn't see any way out of. And when I look back on it, it says, he says, I got you. He has shown me that time and time again. So I have reason to have confidence in him. Go ahead. Hebrews 11 and 1. 
Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now at the time that I was going through all those things, I could not see a way out. Go ahead. The evidence of now, things. Now evidence. Now, when you go to court, you want to make sure that, and witnesses provide direct evidence, or, go ahead. So you want to make sure that your evidence is in line. Go ahead. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh. Now it talks about the worlds being framed by the word of Elohim. He spoke it, and it was done. He spoke it and held tight. Go ahead. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now, she's going back to the story of Cain and Abel. They were, they were the two sons of Adam and Eve. And Cain's offering was not accepted because he offered of the, the ground, which was cursed. So... Abel offered a better sacrifice. Go ahead. By faith, Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness. Now, what is, what is the sacrifice that we offer up unto Yahweh? The fruit of our lips. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging that he is our salvation, that he is our Savior. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That he was righteous, Yahweh testifying of his gifts, and by it now, he is... He, he being was, dead, he was, yet speaketh. Not that Abel was righteous. There is only, there's no, none righteous, no, not one, but Yahshua the Messiah. Go ahead. But we're looking at types and shadows. He gives also these things so that we can understand, we can better understand him and how he is operating. Go ahead. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Now, there were two Enochs. The one Enoch was the son of of uh, <laughs> Cain. So he was the unrighteous Enoch. And there was the other Enoch. Was, was he the seventh generation from Adam? That was righteous. Go ahead. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see so, death. So it, it didn't say that Enoch died. It said that he was translated. Go ahead. And was not found. Mm -hmm. Because Yahweh had translated him for before his so translation... So here's the thing about that. Yahweh just took him. Go ahead. For before his translation, he had this testimony. Now he... Okay, we're talking about witnesses. We're talking about testimony. So this is his testimony. Go ahead. That he pleased Yahweh. Wait. Is it that simple? That we please Yahweh. That's all... It can't be that... There's got to be some kind of works to it. Nope. That's what I was told before I came here, that I had to work upon my salvation. No. So that's the deception. That is the deception in this world, is that you have to do something. You have to know, you, you, you know, ignorant, ignorance is not bliss. You don't want to be ignorant. You want to be informed. You want to be informed. That's where we want to be. Go ahead. Sixth verse. But without faith, now it is here's impossible. The here's the thing. Without faith, go ahead. It is impossible. It is absolutely impossible. To please him. To please him. Now, he's going to give us reason to have faith in him. He's going to send us through things where, you know, you would say, well, mm -hmm. Yahweh, why would you send me through that? Because on the other side, reflecting back, you can see, you can say thank you and you appreciate him knowing what he has done for you. And what we want to do is we want to be a witness to those things that he has shown us and he has brought us through. And at the time that we're going through those things, it's difficult. It's very difficult. But what it is, is if you don't exercise, you're not going to be strong. So through, that's the exercise that we have, is through the things that he's taken us through, the things that he's shown us, that's where the confidence and the strength is. That's why we're able to stand. Go ahead. 
For he that cometh to Yahweh Now, must. Now, he that cometh to Yahweh, first of all, go ahead. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe. Now, he must believe. That, that he is. That he is. And okay. that he is a rewarder. And that he is, there's a reward. Of there them. There is a reward. Go ahead. Of them that diligently seek him. But we have to have diligence. We have to, it's going to take time. You're going to have to, yeah, we're not working upon salvation, but we have to be committed to him and to the things that he's shown us. Go ahead. By faith, Noah, being warned of Yahweh of things not now, seen. Here's another example. It, it, it's, it's great. You know, these, these are tools that we're supposed to use, these charts. They're not a background for us. Now, look at what happened with, 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 with Noah back here. Yahweh looked upon... Uh, would you go over and pick up, uh, how about Ezekiel 33, um, 4 through 6? So this is Noah's preparation for entering to the ark. Now, you have to understand something about the time of, of Noah back there, is that at that time, we didn't have a situation where you had, you know, they're talking about the storms and the, the, the snow and everything that's, that's, that's bombarding our, our country right now and the flooding. Now, it, it talked about a, a mist came up from the ground to water the garden. And Yahweh told Noah that it was going to rain and that he was, and he was told to preach. Go ahead. Ezekiel 33 and 4. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet. Now, here's the thing about Noah was sent as a messenger to warn the people just as Dr. Kinley, in, this end, in, the, in the end of this age, he's that messenger that was sent of Yahweh. Prepare ye for the end. So Noah's in type and shadow, foreshadowed uh, Dr. Kinley, okay, as far as warning the people. I think that's what, what Brandon was picking up before is when he said, when Dr. Kinley was given the vision, he says, man, what are you going to do with that which I've given you? Go ahead. And taketh... Not warning. So if you, now, we're doing the same thing in a type and shadow. We're warning the people. The end is at hand. The end is at hand. Well, people, they've looked around. Well, there's nothing different. You know, we've been, things, things have been going on. You know, we go to work, we do this, and we continue to live on. Now, the people back at the time of, of Noah, you know, we've never heard of such a thing as, as rain coming from the sky. But they've been warned. Go ahead. If the sword come in. Now here's the situation. If Tim, if I warn you, hey, Tim, this building is not structurally sound, and you know you guys need to get in here and put some more supports up in here. Nah, it's gonna, it's not gonna fall. So if it comes and it falls, then you know you didn't heed the warning. Just an example. Go ahead. If the sword come and taketh him away. His blood shall be upon his own head. So if they don't heed the warning, we've been preaching the gospel. The end is coming. We're in the end. And only through the grace of Yahshua is he's, he's, he's waiting for those last few souls that are coming in to be saved. And then he's going he's gonna to close the door. Just like at some point that door was closed. Now, here's the interesting thing about that. Even when you look at Noah, what happened back here, how many souls were saved? There were eight souls. And what was their relationship? They were all one family. What are we? What are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be one family with one name. Okay. Go ahead. Five. He heard the sound of the trumpet and they took... Heard, now, you know, we've had people that come in. They have a seat here. <sighs> They hear the name. Well, that was, that was interesting. And they walk out that door never to come back. They didn't heed the warning. Yahweh didn't put, the, put it within them. It's their loss. You know, we, we're, we're, we're only vessels. We're not the Savior. Only thing we can do is the little bit that he has allowed us to understand is to share it with anyone that might hear. That's it. We, we have a job to do, but we're not, we're not saved by works, but 
the fact that he has shown us a little bit, we don't want anyone to perish. We don't want anyone to, to lose their soul. Because he has been so merciful to us, we want to share that mercy because we know what it is to be on the outside. Mm -hmm. We want to be part of the body. We Go ahead. What else did I have there? I'm he sorry. Oh, he heard the sound of the trumpet. Now they heard the sound of the trumpet. And took not warning. And they took not warning. Well, it doesn't really matter what you call him. He knows who I'm talking about. Now, even if you go back to the Ten Commandments, it talks about not taking his name in vain. So if you reject his name or say, well, I can call him Jesus. He knows who I'm talking about. But do you know who you're talking to? That's the difference. We want you to be informed. He's already, he, he knows all things. Go ahead. His blood shall be upon him. Now, here's the, thing, here's, the, here's the nice thing about that. When you tell someone, when you warn someone of, of impending doom, or you, know, you probably really shouldn't be doing that, what that does is it, it removes the blood from your head. Your conscience can be clear. Go ahead. But he that taketh warning... Now, here's the difference. Tim, told you about the building. What did you do? You, you did nothing? No, 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 you did do something. We had engineers come in and they reconstructed the building so they wouldn't fall. So, okay, so you did the right thing. You heeded the warning, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. So he that heeded the warning, his soul shall be delivered. So that's what happened here. Now, there are those that... Satan has a job, and you know what? He doesn't take a day off. Now, and it talks about, he is, Satan, you know, people, if you know anything about accounting, there's assets and liabilities. Now, for Yahweh, Satan is not a liability. He's a tremendous asset. He really is, because he is. He doesn't take a day off. He's constantly on 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 doing what thus saith Yahweh. Okay, um, what else did I have? Do you want six? Yeah, um, go ahead. But if the watchmen see the sword come, so here's the thing. Once we understand something about this gospel, or understand about Yahshua, and we don't warn the people or we don't share that which he has shown us, then we're liable, we're responsible. Now, we don't want the responsibilities of anyone's demise on our conscience. And that's why we freely share the things that he's shown us. We can't, once you, I mean, and it doesn't matter if you, you know, there, there, there are those like Dave can go through all kinds of things about the history of this, of, of, of you know, of the Bible and Daniel does a fantastic job with with going through the name those are all things that are building that firm foundation which which the body can stand upon it's building up the body or the edifice edifice, edifice what do you edifice thank you go ahead uh, but if the watchman see the sword come so if he sees the sword coming and blow not the trumpet and he not warns not the people and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. So he's taken away in his iniquity. So we, because we are ambassadors of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, we have a responsibility. And it's a tremendous responsibility. But now, his, go ahead. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So what we're doing is we're, because Joshua has had mercy on us, we freely share that which we have been shown. Now, we hope that, every, that there are those that will hear and heed the warning. But if they don't, we can do so with a clear conscience. That we've given what we had to give, whether it's a lot or whether it's a little. And you don't know what the impact of what the few words that you have, have shared you don't know who's going to heed the warning or hear the warning or not. But our obligation is to preach 
to everyone, great and small. That's, that's our obligation. That's our vocation. Yeah. Did I have something else? Matthew or Roman. Romans 1.16. Go ahead. If you pick up Romans. Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the glad tidings of the Messiah. Now, here's a declaration. I'll, I'll make this declaration. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. Go ahead. For it is the power of Yahweh. Because the gospel has power. Tremendous power. Go ahead. For it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation. Now, here's the power. It's the power of salvation. To everyone that believeth. But here's the, but there is a caveat. There's, a, there's, you know, you have to believe. So it has to have some impact. It's going to cause a change. And, and I think there was something where Dr. Kinley said that after he received this divine vision and revelation that he was not the same person. Now, flesh and blood is not going to inherit the kingdom. Just as the children of Israel, they were cut off here at the sixth step or at the river Jordan, they couldn't, their, their offspring went in and inherited the land. These physical bodies are not going to inherit the kingdom. Absolutely not. Thank goodness. Because they are worn down. You know, they, they're old, they're tired. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. Go ahead. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Now, see, here's the thing. Thank goodness. Yahweh does not discriminate. Yahweh don't, doesn't. Mankind does. We want to see division. We, want to, we, we, we see differences. Yahweh, it talks about how, uh, would you, if you could find the scripture where it talks about where you're no longer a servant. Do you want me to finish 17? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. For uh, therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from would faith. Would you back that up and, and start that over again? Sure. For, the, for therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed. Now, it talks about it's the righteousness of Yahweh. It's not our righteousness. Go ahead. Revealed from faith to faith. Now, it's revealed from faith to faith. Go ahead. It, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Go ahead. What's, what's the other one that we had? You were, you were working out of Hebrew. Go ahead. Thank you for keeping me on track. Hebrews 11, continuing on with verse uh, 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. So we're talking about Abraham. He, he went up by, by faith. Go ahead. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. Mm -hmm. as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Would you go over and pick up, if you would, just speaking of, this is just another example of faith, uh, where Abraham is told to offer up his son Isaac. Uh, is that Hebrews 11 and or about 17, is it? Is it Genesis? Where I want to go back and pick up where... where um, Abraham is told to offer up his son Isaac. Is that Genesis 20? Thank you. It's right, right there on the chart, huh? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Genesis 22 and 1. <laughs> Genesis 22 and 1. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did prove Abraham. Now here's, he proved or he tested Abraham. Go ahead. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Now here he's, he's telling Abraham, okay, um, it's, I, we may, go ahead, I'll let you continue. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. Now here he says, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. But he did have another son. But that was the son of his beloved wife. And who in the promise, who, who uh, they were going to be, that he was a promised son. I'll just say it like that. Go ahead. 
whom thou lovest. And he loveth. Go and, ahead. And get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains. So he's going to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice unto Yahweh. That would be very, very difficult to do. Now, I don't know how many of, of us, I'll just speak for myself, it's not happening. There's no way in the world I could do that. Go ahead. And offer upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering. So he's preparing all the things that he's got to, you know, go ahead, I'll, I'll let you read it. And rose up and went unto the place of which Elohim had told him. So Abraham is going unto the place where Yahweh had told him. Go ahead. Then and from on the, the church, you can see right here, he's got Isaac bound. Go ahead. Then on the third day, Ab Abraham lifted up his eyes. Oh, and this is all on the third day? Go ahead. And saw the place there, you know, afar off. Yahweh starts to show us those, those principles over and over again. Go ahead. And saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I will... I and the lad will go okay. yonder. Listen to the verbiage or the terminology. Now he's told to go up here and offer up his son, Isaac. So he's told to kill his son. And this, read that again for me, please. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with okay. the ass. Wait here with the ass. Go ahead. And I and the Until lad. Until I come back. That's not what he said. Go ahead. And I and the lad. Until I and the lad will go yonder. Isaac. Go ahead. And worship and come again to you. And they're gonna he says, We're gonna come again to you because he had faith because Yahweh had given him a son at his old age, and his wife was old. So he had produced life out of a dead womb. So if he was able to give I give him a son in his old age, then he would certainly he had confidence and faith in Yahweh that he would have to raise him up because this Isaac at that time had not had children. And it was going to be through Isaac that the promise was going to be fulfilled. Go ahead. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand so and you a see, knife. So you see the, the son here with wood being laid upon him. We're looking at types and shadows. So those are things that we can extract to understand something more. Now, Joshua had to carry his own cross. So he had, he had the burden of carrying wood. You see the same principle occurring back here with Abraham and Isaac. Go ahead. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. No, he says, Isaac, apparently they've done this before. They've uh, offered up sacrifices. Go ahead. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. Now, Isaac says, I, he, he says, Father, we have, the, we have the fire and we have the wood. Go ahead. But where is the lamb for burnt offering? So where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son... Elohim will provide himself. Listen to himself. the words that he's saying here. It says that, Ab that Yahweh would provide himself. Is that not what he did? Go ahead. And Abraham said, my son, Elohim will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which Elohim had told him of. And Abraham built an altar, an altar there. So Abraham builds an altar. Go ahead. And laid the wood in order mm -hmm. and bound Isaac, his son. Now, he bound Isaac, his son. Now, here's the thing about that. Um, how old was Isaac at that time? 25 years old. And Abraham is an old man. So what you have here as a principle is the son being obedient unto death unto his father in the face of death. And it talks about with Yahshua the Messiah, he could have called 10,000 angels at the time that they were going to crucify him. He didn't have to, he willingly submitted. We see the son willing, submitting to the will of the father here. 
We're looking at principles here. Go ahead. And bound Isaac his son. So he bound Isaac his son. Go ahead. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. And he fully intended to be obedient to the will of Yahweh. He was going to take the life of his son. Go ahead. And Abraham stretched forth his hand. Okay, here, here it is. Go ahead. He stretched forth his hand. And took the knife to slay his son. Mm -hmm. And an angel of Yahweh called unto him out of the heavens. And so here you have the angel of Yahweh. Go ahead. And said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. See, and he, this, this physical or human sacrifice would have not done anything for the sins of mankind. Because this, this sacrifice of Isaac, he was, not a, he was not perfect. He had sin. Go ahead. And he said, lay not thy hand upon thy lad. But this was a test for Abraham, where he believed what thus saith Yahweh. So if we look back and, and see these examples that he's showing us, do we believe? What do we do when, we, when we're tested? So what he does is through those tests, what he does is he increases our faith in him. He gives us reason to have faith in him. That's, what, that's why we go back and look at these things. Go ahead. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest Elohim. So he knows that he, there's fear. And what we're, we're not talking about fright. We're talking about a healthy respect. Go ahead. Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind so he, him a ram. Here's the thing, is Yahweh has already provided us a lamb for a sacrifice. So we're looking at, you know, this, this sacrifice is not sufficient. So Yahweh does provide a sacrifice. He has provided himself a sacrifice. The only worthy sacrifice. Go ahead. And behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by now, his Now, this horns. ram is caught in a thicket. By, by his, his two horns. horns. He's not going anywhere. This is, you know, go ahead. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for burnt offering in the stead of his son. So you have the ram or the lamb that was offered up in her sacrifice. So you have principles, the innocent dying for the guilty. So... That's the confidence that we have with, through Yahshua. What he has shown us is that he has paid this. Do we believe the report that our salvation has been accomplished? That there's nothing left for us to do but, but this. Believe that Yahweh has accomplished our salvation. And be what we want to do is be a witness to the world by our conduct, by our behavior, yeah. that he has truly, you know, caused us to inherit the kingdom. We're not waiting to take off this flesh. Everything that he has promised has been accomplished. Do we believe the report? I guess that's really what Yahweh has put on my mind is that, you know, we are, we are brothers. Mm -hmm. That's what we have in common. If you want to see divisiveness, you don't have to look very far. That's, and con you, you want to see confusion, chaos? Watch the news. Watch what's going on in our physical world. But what we're, you know, we see trouble on every side. But we have the comfort, comfort, or the confidence in Yahshua the Messiah that through all of the chaos, he is keeping us safe. We stand in the gospel. We stand in Yahshua the Messiah. You are, I will continue to experience problems. But there's nothing that my Savior cannot overcome and has not overcome. He has taken me through enough that I have confidence in him. I don't have any confidence in man. And the first one that I'll tell you I don't have any confidence is in this man.
please continue to care for one another. We have no one else but us. With those words, I say hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Player. That's going to bring a close to our class for today. Are there any comments or questions? Indeed, it was a good class today. Enjoyed it much. Again, I would like to thank our visitors. Announcements for today. Let's all rise for the doxology so that we may be dismissed. 
I will be quoting the last two verses of the book of Jude from the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. saved Yahweh doesn't deal in numbers numbers Yahweh only deals in faith tell me will you go the distance or fall by the way I wouldn't get too careless there's still a lot of room in the lake oh yeah 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 Now that's not a multitude, but a warning to behave. 